Come on, Horace, have your breakfast inside. I think I was the one who'd been out all night. Oh, let's get your breakfast. Why does Horace stay out all night, Mother? How do I know? It's Horace's secret. It's very silly when he could sleep. Someday I'm going to own a house without any doors. How do we go out? Through the windows. Probably slam those just as hard. Oh, now, darling, no, not the whole box. We've got an egg coming for whatever boil. But we really know today about the baby? Yeah. Why do they have to kill a rabbit? What rabbit? Hey, Daddy! Ha, 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 ha. If the rabbit dies, we get the baby. I don't know why, though. Oh, what time do you see Doc? At three. Can I go to the doctor's with you? Sure, I'll pick you up after school. You're leaving the car, aren't you, Brad? Yeah, Lou's picking me up in the truck. Do I look ugly this morning, or do I just feel ugly? Mm, no uglier than usual. Why, you... Not in front of no the children, good. please. It'll be a boy, won't it? Mm, naturally. Oh, no, listen, you two, stop bullying me. I don't even know if it's going to be a baby yet. Oh, fine, you know. It might be a monkey. Oh, Daddy. Wouldn't surprise me in the least. When they had a baby at Susan's, her father paid the doctor $300. But they got a boy. Well, you can tell Susan that your father will pay $400. Oh. Getting rich, aren't we, Mouse? Yeah, you don't look so rich. Why don't you get yourself a new jacket? Uh, I haven't got time. I really give up trying to patch this one. Oh, look, Brad. I tore it on a bush yesterday. We're out in the field all day. Well, oh, there's Lou. Now, stop gulping your food. You certainly got time for breakfast. Well, I got to keep stepping in this next few months if we're going to make that March deadline. I had to wire for an extra draftsman. Your father is going to be a very successful man, Polly. And there isn't a thing we can do about it. Well, I'm going to make up for all those lean years you had when I was in the army. You're going to have everything you want, the three of you. Horace, too? No, nope, the monkey. Now, Polly, what can we want that we haven't got? Well, for one thing, you can have Flora come in full time so you can get some rest. Not yet, Brad. Not until we really know. No, I really got to go. Look, honey. Pick me up in the oh, dock, will you? Oh, Brad, stop. Look, this is crazy. Brad, what, huh? you, what did you say about picking you up? Oh, I, said, I said, pick me up after you see Doc. Oh, yeah. all right. Right, Luke. Did I say before you looked ugly? I'm an awful liar. And what are you seeing the doctor about, my dear? I'm waiting to find out if I'm going to have a baby. Psst. You know, if I had been consulted, I could have thought of a much simpler way of having babies in this long, drawn-out process. Kind of hard on a woman's dignity. You're not going to have a baby. But the indications... Might have been caused by several things. You know, you're not exactly constituted to bear children. I made that clear to Brad after Polly was born. Ralph, do you mean... I can't have another baby? Ever? That's right. Both wanted another one so much. You know, Brad, he wants a son. How is Brad? I haven't seen him lately. He's fine. Busier than usual. You know, Mary, I wish you'd take it easy for the next few months. You've been under a strain. Take very good care of yourself. Yeah. All right, put her on. No. 
No, Mrs. Carroll, your daughter has a cold, a common cold. About 15 million people have colds and they usually get well. Do as I say and stop taking her temperature every 15 minutes. That's right. I want to see you next week. All right. Thank you, Ralph. Don't worry about anything and take very good care of yourself. Hmm? Daddy says we have the money to pay for the baby, and I don't see why we can't have it. Why can't we have it? Mother, you're not answering any of my questions. Molly, please, you'll just have to believe what the doctor says. You know, I'm disappointed too, darling. Wait here a minute. There's something I forgot to ask Dr. Free. I'll call you later. Did you forget something? Ellen, is, is Dr. Freen still here? I'll tell him you're here. Mrs. Scott's here. Go on in. Thank you. Yes, Mary. What is it? Ralph, I have a feeling that there's something you haven't told me. Well, I told you the truth. As far as you've gone, yes. What reason would I have to lie to you? When I came in just now, Ellen was phoning Brad. Why? I, I thought I'd tell him about the baby. You didn't think I would? Brad and I are old friends. I thought we'd meet and have a drink. You know, the last thing you said to me when I left here was that you wanted me to take care of myself. Very good care. Is something wrong with me? Well, it's always a good idea to take good care of yourself. As I told you, you've been under a strain. That's the only reason? Mary, please. You're not giving me much credit for intelligence, are you? Remember, you've been taking dozens of x-rays these last few weeks. Precautionary measure. But what were you worried about? Having a baby or not having a baby is a normal matter. Mary, I'm not going into the medical details. But I want you to. I want you to go into the exact medical details. You know... I realize that there's some people who shouldn't be told bad news, but I should. Ralph, we've been friends for ten years. You know me. I'm not taking any more calls. Sit down. Mary, why didn't you come to me sooner? Wasn't so much wrong with me, just tired sometimes. Tired? A year ago, even six months, I might have been able to help you. X-rays made all those tests, hoping to heaven I was wrong. My opinion's been confirmed by the best doctors in the country. But there are things you can do, like radium treatment. Only in preliminary stages. But you, you can operate. You can always operate. It, it's too late.
How long have I got? Ten months, I'd say, at the most. How long will I be on my feet? A half year, if you take reasonably good care of yourself. Don't get too tired. Otherwise, lead a perfectly normal life. Eat and drink what you please. Make the most of those six months. Normal life. Well, six months is a lot of time. In minutes. Shall I tell Brad? No. Will you? You'd be told. I've got to get my bearings first. I'll take you home. No, Polly's in the car. Thank you for telling me the truth. Chase cats? Mother, you just went through a train signal. Oh, did I? I'm sorry. Anyway, there wasn't any policeman. Susan says that if the dog and cat don't grow up together, they'll never be friends. Mother, you just went through a red light. Very careless of you. Don't tell your father, will you? Can I tell him about the dog? Yes, you can tell him about the dog. What are we stopping here for, Mother? What are you looking at, Mother? Just looking at the mountains and the trees. They're very beautiful. But you see them every day. I know, but... Mother, do you feel all right? You know it's time for your music lesson. Couldn't I walk from here? It's just around the corner, and then you wouldn't have to turn around. Cross Main Street alone. Oh, please, I'll be careful. And I've got to start sometime. That's right. Got to start sometime. See you after my lesson. Goodbye, darling. Bye. Home, Chief. Now the wife's picking me up. Wait for me, will you? I'll be right out. Okay. Your new draftsman's waiting inside to see you. How's he look? He's pretty. What? See for yourself. Yes? Are you Mr. Scott? Yes. I have a letter for you from Mr. Harris. You're the one he sent? Yes. I'm Chris Radner. Those are my credentials. You're a draftsman? Well, isn't that what it says? Oh, excuse me. Well, of course, this is an excellent recommendation, but well, to be frank with you, I didn't expect him to send me a woman. Does it make any difference? I mean, as long as I do the work. Well, it's not all office work, you understand. Sometimes you'd have to be out in the field. Well, in all kinds of weather. Well, I've been out of doors before, Mr. Scott. And I don't melt when it rains. Mm. Well, hello. Hello, Mel. You'll be through in a minute. Oh, then I'll wait. 
Well, we'll give it a try. Can you start tomorrow? Yes. We'll set up your board in the morning. Looks like an interesting terrain you're working. Yes. All kinds of problems. Hi, honey. Hello, my early. No, we're just quitting. Oh, this is my wife, Miss... Uh... Radner. Miss Radner. Hello. Oh, Our new draftsman. Oh. Uh, have you got a way of getting back to town? Yes, thank you. The truck's waiting for me. Good night. Good night. Imagine him sending me a woman. The recommendations are so good, what could I do? I gotta get the job finished. Brad, there's something I... Oh, honey, I wanna show you something. Come here. Come here. Look, this is a rough sketch, the way the whole project will look when it's finished. This is the river running down the canyon. When the dam is built, this whole area will be submerged. Just think of all the power that's been wasted in that stream all these years. I'm sorry. What about your project? What did Ralph say? He says my project's off. I'm not up to specifications. We can keep on hoping. That's the point, Brad. We can't. Is he sure, Mary? He's not just guessing. I'm not going to take one doctor's word for it, even if he is a friend of ours. Oh, no, darling, that's all been done, checked. You know, Ralph would never say such a thing unless he was sure he was right. I suppose not. I know what this meant to you. Oh, Brad, this isn't fair. It isn't fair. Hey, Mary, what is this? So we can't have any more kids. So what? We've got the best in the world right now. If you want any more kids, we'll adopt them. Oh, Mary, please. I've never seen you take anything like this before. You know, I wouldn't swap you for all the kids in the world. We're gonna have a wonderful life together. You and Polly and I. Hey, you know that trip to Mexico you've always been nagging about taking? Well, as soon as this job's finished, we'll take it. I just want you and Polly until... That's easy. <laughs> Brad, I suppose everybody wonders sometimes. I mean, if she's in love. That if, that if something were to happen to one of us, well, she'd like to think that the other would be able to go on and be all right. Brad. decorating committee for the New Year's dance, and I haven't had a chance to even start my Christmas shopping. Neither have I. Say, I haven't seen you in ages. Where have you been? Oh, around. Polly, you haven't finished your practicing. Do I have to, Mother? Certainly. I just dropped by to remind you about the clothes. We're trying to get them collected by the first so the church can give them out over the holidays. I'm sorry I forgot all about it. I'll get them together for you right away. Thanks. Be seeing you. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye Flora.
F is short. Oh, is that better? Yes. Darling, you mustn't rely on me. You've got to learn to train your own ear. Mother, don't you think it's a big waste of your money for me to take lessons? I don't think I'll ever be any good. Well, now, you don't have to be a concert pianist in order to enjoy playing. Well, Daddy says I have a touch like a hippopotamus. Oh, your daddy's a fine one to talk. He never even got past chopsticks. Go on now, try that again. Better. Laura, can you find me a box for these clothes? The relief agency's going to pick them up. My goodness, Miss Scott, you've given away most everything you own. Miss Scott, I'm very partial to green. If you wouldn't mind, I'd sure like to have this dotted one myself. Now, where do you think you're going to wear that? Church sociables, next summer when it gets warm. You put kind of a strain on the zipper. Right, it's yours. Oh, thank you, Miss Scott. I'll let the waist out. I'll take good care of it. You'll see. If you don't, I'll come back and haunt you. A live person can't haunt worth nothing, Miss Scott. It isn't December yet. I was just counting the days till Christmas. Oh, Laura, don't do that to me. November's about over, just a few days left. This is so little time. For Christmas shopping. Eight point six two. Eight point six two. Okay, Brownie. Right. Take a turn in that rock over there. How about knocking off for lunch? We'll get the shot and we'll quit. Now, why don't we finish off the whole section first? What's your hurry? Well, you said something about a deadline. Thought I was a slave driver in this outfit. Seven point six three. Seven point six three. I guess I owe you an apology. You certainly don't melt in the rain. Your work has been very satisfactory, too. Thank you. Yeah, let's duck under that tree over there and eat our lunch. That's why I like surveying. You see, I'm the outdoor type. <laughs> When I got mustered out of the Army, I, I could have had a job in an insurance office. Chief will tell you. More money, regular hours, desk I could put my feet up on. Nothing doing. I'll take the rugged life every time. Oh, I see. As a matter of fact, I'm the same way about women. Now, none of those frail blondes for me. You know the kind. They expect you to call a taxi cab if you ask them to walk more than three blocks. Now, wouldn't you think they'd make matches at a light... The outdoor type. Yeah, let me try to dry your jacket off. Huh. Truck ought to be along with our raincoats by the time we get through. And maybe we're in the same army together. Are you a whack or something? The jacket belonged to someone I knew. Who? Say, you must have some other clothes somewhere. What do you mean? You know, the kind you could wear to a hockey game. I just happen to have two tickets for tonight. How about it? No, thanks. Don't you like hockey? Well, I have no opinion about it. Dad, yeah, you'd enjoy it. Why don't you go? I know what hockey is. You know, we play hockey in Europe, too. Well, what do you say? Will you go? I'm sorry. I study evenings. Every evening? Can you mind your own business? Now, where's your lunch pail? Oh, it's stupid. I left it in the truck. Yeah, take one of these. No, please. Go on, my, wife put, no. my wife put these up. She'd take a reflection on her cooking. You didn't have enough. Go on. Well, they look fine. No, thanks, really. This is fine, you know? always look so pretty on the package. Why don't they look like this when I plant them? If you put the seeds in the hotbed now and transplant them, they'll look like that in the spring.
How much are the zinnias? And how much are the sweet peas? 35 cents each. Oh. I'll take these. Thank you, Mrs. Frame. I remember the doctor likes snapdragons. <laughs> yes. Maybe I should stick to geraniums after all. Mary, what are you getting? Oh, I think I'll probably take a point set her later. With what Brad's making these days, Mary can afford to buy her flowers. I'll take these five. You know, Mary, I might make a play for Brad. We dance well together. Over my dead body. <laughs> that wasn't that funny. I don't think it was funny at all. Is this anybody coming my way? I have to wait for Ralph. He's stopping by to pick me up. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Mary? So you thought you could run away from me, huh? <laughs> could I sell you some plants, Doctor? How about one of these? Under just the right conditions, living in a hot house with the best of care, it might last a few months. You don't have to put on an act, Mary. All right. My energy's slipping a little. That's what you expected, isn't it? Any pain? Nothing to speak of. Why haven't you come to see me? It's been over a month. <laughs> Hopeless cases aren't good advertising for a doctor. Don't be foolish. All right, then I'll be truthful. It isn't your fault, I know. But you remind me of what I'm doing my best to put out of my mind. Well, I'm your doctor. I have to see you, even if it's in a hot house. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll try to be more sensible hereafter. You have been pretty wonderful, you know. No, I haven't. Once in a while, when I stop fighting it, I get a flash of, I guess you'd call it philosophy. Suddenly, I realize that what really matters isn't how long we live, but how. When this happens, it's a strange and wonderful feeling. Yes? I don't know if I can explain. The feeling that there's nothing more to lose. So I'm freer than I've ever been before. Completely alive every last minute of me. Does that make any sense? It makes a great deal of sense. Only I slip back so easily. Just today, I got all worked up over a calendar and worried poor Flora. And a few minutes ago, I made a very bad joke out of something Louise said. I guess it's a form of feeling sorry for myself. Mary, you're a very rare and valuable species. <laughs> you better come to the office and comfort me. What seems to be your trouble, Doctor? I've never felt so helpless in all my life. Since when have you two got so interested in orchids? What shall I tell her? Anything that you were testing me for a plant allergy. Goodbye, Mary. Bye, Mary. Bye. I said pig, replied Alice, and I wish you wouldn't keep appearing and vanishing so suddenly. You make one quite giddy. All right, said the cat, and this time it vanished quite slowly, beginning with the end of the tail and ending with the grin, which remained some time after the rest of it had gone. How can anything vanish and leave its grin behind, Daddy? I don't know. I never tried. Oh, now, Brad, you can do better than that. Oh, you bought us a book. You explain it. If Horace were to vanish suddenly... What would you remember about him the most? The white spot on his face. Well, then that would be the last thing to vanish, wouldn't it? Because it's the thing you'd remember the longest. Yeah. When tonight's party is over, it'll be this tie I remember the longest. Oh, come here, help this. No, I can Let tie Let me do it for you, Brad. You've never been able to do one yet. It's getting late. You sure Chris is coming? Well, she accepted. Don't be surprised, though. She shows up in a pair of pants and a leather jacket. You'll have to pretend it's a costume ball. Well, anyway, I'm glad you thought to invite her. It's no fun being alone on New Year's Eve. Well, I've often seen cats without a grin, thought Alice. But this is the first time I've ever seen a grin without a cat. But if Horace were to vanish, he'd be dead, wouldn't he, Mother?
white spot on his face or the way you feel about him. But none of the important things, darling. Run along now. It's time for your bed. Oh, not until you go, please. Oh, there she is. Oh, Brad, you go, will you? You're dressed. Either. We'll be right down. I was wrong. She looks like a million dollars. Seems to me that girl's given you several surprises. So I don't understand women, except the one I married. Well, she looks a little pale tonight. Want me to make you drink? No, wait till we get there. Good night, Daddy. You look very pretty, Mother. Do I, darling? Not as pretty as Mr. Spears, but you're a lot nicer. Betty Breen said Uh-uh, no gossip. Good night, darling. Happy New Year all your life. Have a good time, Mother. Let you and I practice something. Now look at me. Close your eyes until I vanish. See if you can remember just the grin. I can, Mother. That's fine. Hello, Chris. I'm so glad you came. Thank you. Here we go. Yep. Stay where I can find you. It's almost 12 o'clock. <laughs> hey, any more surprises you're holding back? You didn't tell me when you asked for the job, you were also a good dancer. Is that a requirement, too? Besides not melting in the rain. <laughs> One of us, do you think you're fooling? I think you're right. I'm going to lie down for a minute. Mary, what's the matter? Just resting. I was tired. Why aren't you dancing? Ralph thinks you ought to go home. It's crazy. There's nothing wrong with me that drink won't take care of. You got some rouge, Mona? Breaking an old custom, aren't you? You marry next year's mother. Mary, are you sure you're all right? Why, is Ralph being an alarmist or something? No, not exactly. No, this is quite an occasion, Mona. What do you mean? Another year ending all of us together again. You and Ralph and Brad and I. <laughs> Let's go.
call him. Better call in that husband of yours. That Miss Rodden is a good dancer, isn't she? Yes, that's the least of her talents. Brad says she's the best dress we ever had. Well, can we have some wine, or do we have to wait? Waiter, open the wine, please. Right away, doctors. Sober. I'm not gonna be long. Happy New Year, Mary. Hey, Jack. hey, where you going with the bottle? For me and my girl. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. For once, I've had enough dancing. Oh, nonsense. You're just resting between rows. I'm afraid I was overdoing it, wasn't I? a hand, my trusty friends, and give a hand of thine. We'll take a cup of kindness yet for old Lang Syne. Old acquaintance. We'll never forget. For the rest of our lives. Together. Sit down and finish your coffee. <laughs> One you drink coffee on New Year's Eve. Imagine diluting champagne with coffee. How about some champagne, Joe? Sorry, no license. That's like you gotta have a license for everything these days. You can't even get married without a license. Come on, folks, make your bid before it's too late. This isn't gonna go on forever, you know. Nothing lasts forever. Now, what am I offered for my unexpired term? Form did I hear? Diamond bracelet, million dollars, the beautiful lady at the end. What do you bid? No, thanks. Mary, will you take a trade in? <laughs> Where do you live? I'll drive you home. Well, I can with the Scots. Oh, but that doesn't mean you have to go home with them. Oh, yes, it does. <laughs> Mary, with that throat condition, you ought to be in bed. Dr. Freen, whose adenoids are these? It's after office hours. Isn't there any other place open? No, please. The party's over. I like it here. I'm going to stay here till morning. But darling, look at the clock. It is morning. I'm through looking at clocks. Brad, if I were you, I'd take her home. OK, Miles, come on. I'll straight off the clock. You're coming peacefully? Don't you dare. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Here we are, Miles. Oh, 
we stopping for one more drink? No, the party's over. That's right. I better put you to bed. I'll take Chris home first. No, that is... Okay. I'll be right back. You better be. I said you better be right back. Thanks for inviting me, Mr. Scott. I've had a wonderful time. Good night, good night Chris. Oh, is it good morning? Stastny Novirok. That's Happy New Year in my country. Stastny Novirok. <laughs> Never. I found a quarter. <laughs> found an address book once. Didn't do me any good. San Francisco. <laughs> oh, here's George. Good heavens, more discards. This town's gonna be naked. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Where do these go? Those have to be ironed. Well, what have we here? The Ice Age. They won't bite you, Louise. I'm not so sure. What are we gonna do with them? Patch them up. <laughs> What have you got for me? Here's something. Thank you. I asked that Miss Rubner to come in and help us nights. Yeah. But she's too busy. She probably is. She's busy, all right. Always at Brad's elbow, out on the field, having lunch with him. Late sup. Got a private detective or something, Frida? I'm sorry, Mary. But it's true, isn't it? Yes, it's true that Brad's out with Chris quite a lot. It's also true that he's on a rush job and needs her. And if he eats with it's because he knows she's hungry. If you're a friend of mine, you'll stop talking about it. The kindest thing I can say about you, Frida, is that you're an idiot. Do you believe there's any truth in what they're saying, Mona? Where there's a lot of smoke, sometimes there's a little fire. But if you keep your head and don't call the fire department, my guess is it'll burn itself out. Most of us have learned that from experience, Mary. Won't you get me a glass of water, please? Good for what ailed you. Mary, getting upset about this isn't going to help. Don't stick in your house so much. Go out with Brad just the way you used to. Pretend nothing's happened. Nobody's ever going to mean as much to Brad as you. You've got to get back in the swing. Show a little fight. Get yourself some new clothes. Fix your hair differently. I think it's a little too late for a love campaign. Take a turn in that little rise behind you. Right. We'll use this as a benchmark. Hey, Chris, look. Oh, it's wonderful. A little bit to your left.
All right, I've got it. I guess we're ready to stake out this section. This job, yes. But there'll be others. Do you mean you want me to go on working for you? First, when I find somebody as good as you are, I try to hold on to him. To her? <laughs> to her. Are you sure that's the reason why you want me to stay? What other reason could I have? It's important for me to know. That's the reason. It's enough, isn't it? Yes. Slam the front door. I reform. You want to get more sleep? You don't get so much yourself. Yeah, can't be helped. Do you have to spend quite so much time on this job? Yes, Mary, I do. Well, I was just asking. Well, the maps are due next month. All this rain has been holding us up. Even with an early spring and good weather, we'll just about make it. How is Chris working out? What do you mean? Well, just, is she able to take on some of the responsibility? Yes, she is. It's good. Brad, I'm going away. What? Oh, just for a few weeks. I want to go to San Francisco and see Father. I can't get away right now, Mary. You must be crazy to think so. Oh, no, I was going by myself. Flora will be able to take care of everything here. But we've always gone places together before. Can't you wait a few weeks and then we'll go, the both of us? I want to see Father before... before long. Mary, is there anything wrong? Wrong? Why? I thought maybe you might be imagining things. I know I haven't been fit to live with the last few weeks. Way most of the time, I'm not very good company when I am here. Well, it's this job. <laughs> oh, Brad, you love to drive yourself. You always have. Your pajamas under the road. What's the trouble, Brad? I guess I need a change. You know that trip to Mexico? Well, the day the job is finished, let's take it. How about it? Hope I get some sleep tonight. A big day tomorrow. past Northview School. Remember where you and Mother used to teach? Ivy's grown a little thicker, otherwise it hasn't changed. Then I drove through the park past Pearson's restaurant. I thought I'd take you there on Saturday for lunch, for old times' sake. You're having quite an attack on nostalgia, aren't you, Mary? In the last three days, you've visited more places and people than you have in the last three summers. You know, you might as well put this book down, Father. I'm not going to give you any peace. <laughs> I'm glad you came, Mary. After all these years, I'm still tagging after you. You're thinner than last summer, and your eyes don't look right. 
I didn't sleep well last night, that's all. Aren't these class pictures funny? Father, do you remember when I was about ten, and the plainest girl in the neighborhood and very miserable about it? You said to me one day, Mary, if it really worries you, I can give you a prescription for beauty, much better than anything that comes out of a bottle. You said, forget yourself, and someday everyone will think you're beautiful. Well, you are. It must have worked. No. But I'm still trying to forget myself. Lately, I've been trying very hard. You have time, my dear. Aren't you a little young to be a Finnish philosopher? What's happened to Lee Corbett? Well, you know, his wife died. He took it pretty hard, I guess. wonder how long it takes a man to get over a thing like that. It all depends. Some never do. Why didn't Brad come with you? He always has before. There's nothing wrong, is there? Oh, no. He wanted to come. He's just working day and night on this job. I've always liked Brad, Mary. I hope money doesn't get too important. No, it won't. Brad will be all right. You've always been so good for me. Now you can go back to your book. Hello, Master. How are you? Has my father come? Uh, the professor has not yet arrived, but a table is reserved. This way, please. Mary. Lee Corbett, how are you? I didn't know you were in town. I was going to call you. Brad with you? No, father, unless he's forgotten. <laughs> well, don't sit here until he comes. Right. I'm with a friend. She'll be back in a few minutes. How are Brad and Polly? They're just fine. Ah, oh, that's wonderful. Cigarette? No, thank you. It's a long while since I've seen you. I know. Last summer seems like another life. How are you, Lee? Mm, all right, I guess. Time changes things, you know. And the children? They're with my mother for the time being. It's better that way, at least while I'm getting my bearings. Of course, I might not be alone always. I can take them back if it works out. Yes, of course. It wasn't easy, Mary. I didn't know it was possible for a house to be so empty. Sometimes I felt... No use going into that. No, don't talk about it if you don't want to. You kind of make me remember things. You and Ellen were always very close. She was a wonderful person. Here's Doris. She's a girl I know rather well. When you get acquainted with her, I think you'll like her. Sorry to have been so long, darling. I had to make a couple of calls. Doris, this is an old friend, Mrs. Scott. Doris Weldon. How do you do, Miss Weldon? Glad to meet you, Mrs. Scott. Lee's talked a lot about you. Well, haven't you, darling? I'm sure I have. Doris is a... Uh... Friend of the Johnsons, Mary. That's how we met. Oh, I see. I told you I wanted another drink. Didn't you order it? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. I'll, I'll get one right away. Well, there's Father now. Mary, how about having dinner with us next week? We've hardly had a chance to talk. Yes, we'd I, love to have you. I'm afraid I, I'm going home soon. Oh, I'm sorry. I am too. Goodbye, Miss Weldon. Pleasure Goodbye, Jean. Goodbye, and my best of Brad. All right, I will. Thank you. Do you wish to order now, Professor? Oh, in a moment. Very well, sir. I was afraid you'd give me up. The dean wanted to talk about that new seminar. It's all right. I was sitting with Lee Corbett. No. How is he? I don't know. Father, I might have to leave on Thursday. My dear, you were going to stay another week. What made you change your plans? I just feel I ought to get home to Brad and Polly. What do we have?
doctor wanted me to tell you sooner. Somehow I couldn't. But now, Brad, after seeing Lee Corbett, I had to tell you. If ever a man was lost, it's Lee. If he marries this girl, I know she can never take his wife's place. Never be a mother to his children. Darling, what's happening to Lee mustn't happen to you after I'm gone. Never, never. Now you know everything, my dearest. Perhaps it's better that you should. I can't stand it any longer all by myself. Help me, Brad. Only you can. I'm taking the train tomorrow. Meet me Thursday morning. And try not to. Taxi, ma'am? Taxi? Nice morning. Looks like we're going to have an early spring. She's just fine. You must be tired. No, I'm all right. You know how hard it is to get her to practice the piano. But I told her she's got to have a new piece to play when you come home. And Mr. Scott? Oh, he just works all the time. Doesn't come home except to sleep. He left this morning before I got up. I sent him a letter a couple of days ago. Do you know if he got it? I put all the mail there, Mrs. Scott. Don't know if he's opened any. I've only seen him once or twice since you left. If he's not careful, he's going to get sick. I'll get along with breakfast, Mrs. Scott. Thank you. Finished, Mrs. Scott? Yes, thank you, Flora. Would you like one of the kittens, Flora? Goodness, child, what would I do with a kitten? I see enough of Horace. Mother, why didn't Daddy come home for dinner tonight? I don't know. He knew you were home, didn't he? Uh, yes, he did. He said he'd be here. You know, it's way past your bedtime. Come on, I'll do your braids. Oh, I can braid my hair all by myself now. Can I, Flora? You sure can. You're wonderful. Good night, Mother. Good night, darling. Good night, child. Now, don't you bother about that, Mrs. I've Scott. I've got to do something, Flora, otherwise. You just do what you want. No, no, I'll get it. Hello? Yes, Brad. Yes, I understand. I just couldn't make it, that's all. I'm sorry. No, it's not work. Look, Mary, I want to talk to you, but I, well, I can't on the phone. All right, I'll explain later. Bye.
Waiter? Yes, sir. Check, please. Right away. the trouble I ran out of gas well I have an extra can in the shack how did you get on this road did you see the sign oh, I, I, I guess I, I wasn't looking well, it's a good idea to read signs miss you live longer that way Louise I'm going crazy I've tried everywhere I can think of Mona Frieda no one's seen her she left in the car hours ago. No, she didn't tell Flora where she was going. All right, Louise, thanks. I'll call you if I hear anything. I've been going crazy. I... I ran out of gas. This wasn't just a flirtation then. You really like Chris, don't you? Yeah, she's a fine girl. I can believe that. Maybe someday she'll find what she's looking for. I'm luckier. I found it a long time ago. You and Polly are all I really want. You know that, don't you, Mary? Yes. I don't know how it started. I suppose being with her most of the time, getting to depend on her, to get involved without knowing how. First, you tell yourself, Nothing's changed. Tell yourself that ten times a day. But well, deep down in your heart, you know that you're walking a tightrope. Either you get off the tightrope or fall off. So tonight we talked it over and decided to call it quits. She's going away. I couldn't explain that to you on the telephone. And when I got home and found that you weren't here, I thought maybe something had happened to you. I, I knew life wouldn't be worth living without you. You mustn't say that, Brad. Why not? It's true. No. 
You just think that now. But you'd go on with Polly and you would. You'd, you'd marry again. I'd want you to. Why so serious, Mouth? You're safe. Nothing's going to happen to you. That's right. Brad? There's no reason for Chris to leave. You meet at the office, don't you? Well, not in this job. It's about done. I've got to go up to Sacramento tomorrow and deliver the maps to the state engineers. We'll be gone a few days. When I come back, we're going to take that trip. I'm not going to let you out of my sight for a long time. Well, what Just sit down, please. Thank you. Brad's going to Sacramento. He'll be there a few days. Yes? Chris, I want to ask you a favor. You do? I don't even know how to put it. It's something that... You needn't worry, Mrs. Scott. I'm going away. No, that isn't what I want. Then what is it, then? I want you to stay. Why? Well, there's been quite a bit of gossip. Now, if you leave... Well, if I stay, there'll be some more gossip. You know that. So that isn't the reason, is it? No. Well, what is it, then? It seems to me, so long as you and I know what we're doing... But I don't know, Mrs. Scott. But I can guess what you are doing. You're getting a revenge in your own way. Chris, that never even entered my mind. Please listen to me. I can't listen to you, Mrs. Scott. I was in love with Brad, and I still am. So much that you wouldn't even understand. And I would have taken him away from you if I could. Only I... I knew that... that you meant much more to him than I or anyone else ever would. Now do you still want me to stay? Yes. Yes, I still want you to stay. But I made a mess of it. Chris, you think I came here to gloat? I didn't. I came to ask for your help. All I've managed to do is antagonize you. I'm sorry. came to see your mother. She's in the living room, but she isn't feeling very well. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I'll be back some other time. Oh, no, no. She isn't really sick. You can see her. Are you sure it's all right, Pauline? I'm sure. I'll be back in a minute. Someday she just doesn't feel very good. Or is it well? Well. Yeah. Other days she feels fine. It's a visitor, Mother. Why, Chris? Come in. Oh, please don't get up. Sorry, you're not feeling well, Mrs. Scott. You'll be all right tomorrow. Please sit down. <laughs> Polly, don't you think you'd better go feed Horace? You know you've got to take extra good care of him now. Hurt. Hurt. 
Sorry. Horace is our cat. He's just changed his sex and presented us with five kittens. She's a fine child. I think so, too. Do you like children? Oh, yes. Mrs. Scott, I... I hope it wasn't my fault. I mean, you're being ill. Oh, no, Chris. You had nothing to do with it. It was very rude. I'm sorry. That's what I came to tell you. I'm glad you came. Does this bother you? No, not at all. Do you know it? Yes. Brad always prefers jazz to classical music, but even he likes this one. I used to play it after my husband died. It made me feel... Oh, I don't know how to say it. As if there was some reason for living after all. When did this happen? During the war. We'd met over in Europe. He was killed in North Africa. We'd only been married for a short time. Oh, I didn't know you'd been married. Mrs. Scott, I must tell you something. Yes, what, Chris? When I lost my husband, I didn't want to live. I hated a world that, that could give you life and happiness, and then take it away so, so capriciously. So I put all my energy into my work, and I had a good job. Because at that time, they needed my kind of skill. Then the war was over and the men came back. And I, I couldn't even find a job anymore. More than ever, I resented being a woman. And I did, I did everything I could to forget I was. I thought, I thought all, all the warmth inside me had burned out. And then, then I met your husband. And I learned that still feel for someone else, that I was still a woman. I'm very grateful to him. You don't need to tell me anymore, Chris. Yes, but it was still not right what I did. And I didn't mean what I said when you came into my room. We can't always know the reason why things happen. Chris, I'm wondering if you wouldn't reconsider and stay on the job. Just for a while, at least. Brad and I are going away, and I know he feels so much better if you were looking after things. So would I. Do you really want me to? Oh, this isn't a noble gesture. It's asking a favor of a friend. We are friends, aren't we? Yes, Mrs. Scott. Well, then, do you think you could make it merry? Just so it isn't Brad and Mrs. Scott? Yes. It's Dr. Frey, Mother. Oh, Ralph, come on in. Mama's already invited me. You remember Chris, don't you? Of course. Hello, Doctor. You know, I'd love to see your kittens, Polly. Oh, would you? Come on, I'll show them to you. Nothing in life could surprise me anymore, but I guess I was mistaken. What are you up to? None of your business. All right, so it's none of my business. Time to tell Brad, isn't it? Not quite. Here's another load. Thanks. Chris. Yes. Pressing department. Okay. Well, hello, Mrs. Free. Hello, Chris. How are you doing? Bye. I had a feeling that girl was all right. So did I. Careful. You'll be sprouting wings, Mary. Oh, nonsense. I'm just thinking of myself and a couple of other people. Hello, Pauline. Hello. Hello, Chris. Hello, Mary. So good to see you. 
Do you think I could leave Polly with you for a couple of hours? I'd love to have her. It's Flora's day off, and I've got a lot of shopping to do. All right. Well, it's now about three. I'll pick you up at five. Okay. Bye. 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 Thank you. Fix up a board, and we'll make some drawings. How about it? Fine. I'll draw an elevation. Uh huh? What is an elevation, Miss Radner? Why don't you call me Chris? All right. so innocent. What's Chris doing here? Oh, we've been talking about Polly. She's been giving her piano lessons while I teach us away. Well, I'm a simple man. I may have acted like a bigamist once, but... Oh, no, that didn't have anything to do with it. She and Polly get along wonderfully. They're very fond of each other. We had to settle once. Don't you think we ought to leave it that way? Well, couldn't she just stay on the job until after our trip? I'd feel so much better knowing she's around when we're gone. You generally got a good reason, even when you won't tell me what it is. Thank you. Why aren't you dressed? Oh. What have you been doing in bed this time of day? I was just taking it easy, resting up for our trip. You don't look very rested. Don't I? I'll get dressed, then I'll look better. She's finally mastered her multiplication table. Oh, and Brad, I hope you won't be disappointed, but I'm afraid the two weeks for our trip is about, about all I can manage. sure there's something she's not telling me. I know she saw you because... I'll be right over. Why didn't you tell me this before? Why didn't you tell me before? Mary wanted it this way. You shouldn't have listened to her. It was her life. But I could have helped her. How, Brad? What could you possibly do? Stayed with her every minute of every day. She didn't want pity. You don't understand. I, I was away most of the time. More than I had to be. Well, the important thing is now. Mary's going to die. And you and Polly are going to live? Without Mary. Mary's accepted this. Well, I'm not going to accept it. Ralph, there must be something we can do. Even if there's a chance in a million, I'll take her anywhere in the world. Please, Ralph, tell me a clinic, a Brad, doctor, something. Brad, there's no use giving you false hope. We've done everything we possibly could. I've read the x-rays a, a hundred times. I've consulted with the best doctors in the country. You can read the reports. They're in the files. All the same. Case too advanced for treatment. <laughs> Mr. 
What good are doctors if they can't help Mary? Every doctor says that to himself a thousand times. All of us know soldiers. And the awful thing is we could know more, much more. But most of our brains and money go into things to increase our misery instead of lessen it. So cancer takes us by default, and people like Mary have to die. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to give you a lecture. Well, you have a few weeks while Mary's still on her feet. Weeks. Listen, Brad. You had five months without this hanging over your head. Mary made that possible. Now you make the next few weeks possible for her. No, I did care. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. I seem to be the only one in Mexico that speaks a pure high school Spanish. Never mind. I think you're doing fine. The way they treat us, I've got an idea. They think we've just been married. After ten years. The best ten years of my life, by the way. The best two weeks of the best ten years. Thanks for not saying once, are you tired? That's the man I married. Your fortune, senora. I read the palm. I am only learning. No, not today, please. Yes, Brad, let her practice on me. Come on, tell me what you see, and I'll tell you if it's true. Long lifeline, long and deep, except for a little break right here. But then it runs into this one. Like a brook flowing into a river. And it seems to go on forever. Yes. And the heart line. You are very lucky, Senora. Mexico City calling. Go ahead, please. When did it happen? Yes. Yes, Brad. Yes, Paul is all right. I can't talk anymore now. Remember what your mother said when she left? No, I. I don't remember she smiled. 